So before we get started, I wanna give a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So about a month ago, I was asked in a Q&A video whether or not I thought stretching between sets can increase muscle growth. And here's what I had to say. Basically the idea was to really pump the muscle full of blood and then stretch it between sets. Uh, I don't think there's any research to support that. That's pretty much bro science in my opinion. Well, that video was published in February and now just a couple weeks here later, this month's issue of the Mass Research Review has me sort of eating my words on this one. So apparently a few years ago, there was this grainy picture of a PowerPoint slide making its way around the internet. And it was saying that there was a study on the way which would finally show that stretching between sets does in fact boost hypertrophy in humans. However, that study was never actually published. Now you can actually still find the abstract online, which does in fact say that when subjects stretched their calves for 30 seconds between sets of calf raises, they saw significantly more calf growth. So there very well could be something to it, but I don't think we should put too much stock in a study that was never actually published. Now, there's also this infamous 1993 paper, which showed over a 300% increase in the lat muscle mass in just 28 days from weighted stretching alone. So you can imagine the bodybuilding magazines had fun with this one. Uh, but they may have failed to mention that this study was in fact conducted on the right wing of 26 adult quail, so birds, and was never actually replicated in humans except for that dusty PowerPoint slide that never ended up getting published. So up until now, you've had many trainers really pushing this interset stretching idea, including some really high profile bodybuilding coaches like Hani Rambot, and he's coached Phil Heath, Jay Cutler, and many others. And as far as I can tell, he's someone who's based pretty much his entire training philosophy around stretching in between sets. On the other hand, you have skeptics like myself who've been quick to write this idea off as harmless but still pointless bro science. Um, so enter this January 2009 study out of Sao Paulo in Brazil, which took 29 subjects and split them into one of two groups, giving them the same pretty standard full body training program where they hit bench presses, tricep extensions, seated rows, bicep curls, leg extensions, and leg curls for four sets of eight to 12 reps to failure two days per week. One group lifted with no stretching between sets and the other group stretched the muscle they were training for 30 second holds between every set. So for example, for example, when hitting the bench press, they do 30 second stretches for their pecs between all four sets, and they were holding the stretch just below the point of pain or discomfort. Uh, so to me, this sounds like pretty rigorous stretching, but nothing actually painful. Um, so here are the results. After eight weeks of training, the researchers measured muscle thickness of four muscles. And when they added the four measurements up, overall, they saw just about 50% more muscle growth in the stretching group, which is pretty impressive for only eight weeks. However, when you look at the actual results, you'll see that it was in fact only a statistically significant effect for the vastus lateralis or outer sweep quad muscle. So while growth in the biceps, triceps and rectus femoris all favored the stretching group, the differences between groups weren't enough to reach statistical significance until you pooled the results together. Um, so it could be that this only works for the quads or maybe it works best for the quads. Or maybe there just needed to be more time or more subjects for the bicep and tricep results to become significant. Uh, but either way, I think these results are really impressive. And even though it is only one study, I think it is really well designed. So at this point, I'd personally be comfortable making the recommendation that if you're gonna be resting for one to three minutes between your sets anyway, you might as well make yourself useful and do 30 seconds of stretching rather than just trolling on social media. Now, there are a few important disclaimers about how you should actually implement this in the gym so that you don't actually accidentally impede your gains by overstretching. First, the intensity of the stretch shouldn't be too high. According to Mass, a previous study showed that if you stretch to the point of actual pain, it can decrease hypertrophy. So don't stretch past the point of mild discomfort. And second, you shouldn't stretch for too long. Now, holding stretches for a long time, greater than 60 seconds, can decrease force and power output. So I'd recommend keeping your stretches at or below 30 second holds just to be safe. Now as for why this works, I think it's a little too early to say, but I think it could have something to do with blood flow and nutrient delivery to the muscle similar to what you'd see in blood flow restriction training, but that's really just a stab in the dark at this point. And the Mass article, Greg Knuckles speculates that it could be simply a matter of just exposing the muscle to a greater amount of cumulative tension. Uh, but even in the absence of a known mechanism, given that there doesn't really seem to be any downside, as long as you do it right, I'd go ahead and add this to your routine. Personally, I'm planning to start with simply stretching the agonist muscle for the first three or four heavy sets 
for the workout. Uh, so for example, on a push day, I'll stretch my pecs between sets of bench press, but I won't continue stretching them during the pec deck sets or whatever isolation work I have planned. And in between sets of pull-ups, I'll stretch my lats for 30 seconds, but not on the subsequent rowing work, uh, because I do have a feeling that there will be a point of diminishing returns when it comes to stretching volume, and I'd always rather err on the side of caution when adding in something new. Now, when it comes to stretching as part of a warm-up or a cool-down, uh, I've explained my full protocol there for pre-workout dynamic stretch and foam rolling. Uh, so I'll go ahead and link that video down below if you guys would like to check it out. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Before we go, I wanna give a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that I use to run jeffnippard.com. And I'm currently in the process of rebranding and redesigning my website once again. And every time I switch things up over there, I'm reminded of just how simple it is using Squarespace. And I also use the platform to run my online store where I sell all my training programs. Uh, they have sleek designer custom templates and 24 hour customer support, which I always find to be really helpful and really quick. So if you guys would like to get started with building your own website, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered, and that's gonna save you 10% off your first purchase. So thank you so much Squarespace for showing your support on the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new, and I'll see you guys all here in the next video.